Hey everyone and welcome back. This video is going to be a very quick and simple look at adding some extension to the console command options that you get with inside of the Unreal Engine. And the reason I'm doing this is I've had a request in the comments asking if I'd cover something like this. And I just want to mention, first of all, that there are a few shortcomings of this. And that is uh, what I'm talking about is if we press play and hit the tilde key, then we get the console command option come up down here. Now, this is similar to what someone mentioned being like the source engine where you can type things in here and you can find information about your game. So stat FPS will bring up the frame rate counter in the corner of the screen. Now this is really good and this can be a really handy debugging system as well because you can extend custom events and even functions into the console command, which is obviously gonna be really useful for debugging and quickly getting to the bottom of things when you're developing. Now the one problem with this, and it's not really a problem, it's a safety precaution, uh, but that is that you are unable to use this in a shipped version of the game. So for debugging, this is perfect. Even if you're only using development builds, also still gonna work. But when it comes to packaging something, if you're going to the build configuration and you change it from development to shipping, which is generally the, the, uh, the, the version you will use when you are putting this on a console or on Steam, then the console commands are removed. So this is really a debugging setup. Now this is something that really interests me, so I might go into this in a little bit more depth later, something that I need to look into myself to uh, delve into this a bit further. Uh, but I've really been getting into Into the Breach at the moment, and I've been playing way, way too much of that over the last couple of weeks. It's a really good game, uh, but one of the things I like in that is that you have access to their console command and the debugging that the developers had as well. So you can use it as like a cheat system, but you can also make the game a little bit harder for yourself by spawning in things like new enemies, changing the placement of things. It just gives you a little bit of freedom to play about with how you want to go through matches. And I've already finished the entire game now. I've got all of the mech squads and everything. So it it's just really good to have that option. Uh, and I think it really extends games. So I'm interested in adding this type of thing into other games in the future. And that's why if you wanted to do that in shipped versions of the game, then you need to look at things like adding this into Blueprint widgets and creating your own system for this. But we're gonna use the debugging approach for this. So what we need to do first of all, this is a completely empty project. I'm just gonna go into the Blueprints folder and go and open the level Blueprint. So this is generally the easiest way to access the console commands and the custom events. So what I wanna do is come in here and create a new custom event. And I'm just gonna call this Give Health. And the reason I'm doing this is this is the kind of thing that you'd normally see in the console commands is things like um, infinite health or adding health or taking away health of a player or enemies and things. And to begin with, from here, I just want to get a simple print string. So if we get the print string and I'm gonna say health given and then a number. Okay, so we're gonna hard code this at the moment. This is really just to show how this is gonna work. And I'm gonna come back and show you how we can expose things like um, some inputs to the function so that we can actually customize this value in a moment. So if we compile this, we'll go back in and we'll press play again. Now what we want to do again is hit the, the button that you have to open up the console command. And we want to type CE for custom event. And we can see here, we have the give health function. So it already knows that we have something called give health in our level blueprint, which we have access to now, which is the custom event we've just made. And if we hit enter, we're gonna get our print string at the top saying health given 10. So if we come back in, I'm gonna drop this down and I'll make this last a little bit longer, change the color so it's a bit more bit more uh, visible. And what I want to do now is I want to show how we can override this and pass in how much health we want to give, like I said, that player or that enemy. So from here, I'm gonna pull off and I'm gonna get an append node. And from the B section, I just want to change this to float. So I want to get a uh, two string from a float value. And the reason being is that we can then just quite lazily plug this in. That will automatically give us an input value in the custom event. And I'm gonna rename this to health amount. Okay, so that's the amount of health that we want to give the player. We're going to append that to the end of the string. And I'm just gonna type the same thing as we did just now. So I'm gonna say health amount, and then put the colon and a space there so that it's gonna append the value to the end of this string. So now if we go in, what we can do is we'll see there's a slight change. So again, we'll bring up the console command. Uh, we'll type C for custom event, and we'll type give health. And one thing to mention there is that I did this whilst I was down in the editor window, I didn't notice. Make sure you've actually clicked into the window to make sure you get the correct command console come up here. Uh, now if we type C and you can see give health is there already. Uh, you'll also notice this time that we have the health amount, which is what we named the input argument, and it knows it's a float value. So what we want to do is tab up to that 
and this time we'll say we'll give the player 50 health so we'll type in give health 50 and now we'll see health amount 50 is added so you can see quite simply that if you had a health system on a player character uh, you could have your health system also influenced by this custom event and you can plug in things like the input values you'd normally put into that as well so that is one way of doing it and i have noticed that in other references to this people have said you're not able to do it in any other class apart from the level blueprint so i just wanted to cover that as well now i've gone ahead and i've made myself a blueprints folder and the reason being is we're going to come in here and we will create a new blueprint class and for this demo, I'm just going to use a game mode just because the way that I kind of envision this working is going to be better for classes which only tend to have one instance of themselves. So things like game states, game instances, where there's only ever going to be one of them. When it comes to things like actors and pawns, because you can have multiple, it's a little bit harder to target these and you'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to call this BP underscore game mode. And inside of this, I'm just going to go first of all actually to the project settings, go to maps and modes. Remember to always update your custom game mode with the one you want to show in the game go back to the game mode class and again in the event graph make sure you uh, stop the game as well if you had that running i'll come down and create another custom event in here and i'm just going to call this one the game mode event just so it's clear where this is coming from and again we'll just do a simple print string so that we can see something happening so with that done change the string that's given here and we'll just again call, say this uh, will print out game mode event and like i mentioned before i'm just going to make this a bit darker tend to like orange and last a little bit longer just so that you guys can all see this uh, i know that in the video it can be a bit hard sometimes to keep up with things so that will last long enough that you can see this in the top left now we don't need any values and everything that kind of works exactly the same way this is just to show the other way that you can get custom events from classes which are not the level blueprint now obviously the main reason for that is that the level blueprint's fine but if you've got a, a number of levels that you're going through uh, you don't want to keep pasting this into all of the different levels just so that you can get the uh, console commands working if you can dump it in something like a game mode or a game state or even if you make an actor that you only ever have one of the like your custom event or custom commands actor and have one of those in each class then you can access it this way so if we go back in and press play click in bring up the console command this time what we want to do is type instead of ce which was obviously custom event we want ke which i'll be honest i don't know what that stands for uh, we then want the multiply sign and after this we want to get the name of the event we're looking for now you'll notice that we haven't specified the class because i haven't got this to work all the time i find that with things like pawns uh, referencing the name of the actor that spawned over here will work fine uh, for game modes that doesn't work so what we want to do instead is this is going to run through any class of a type which is running this function and it will call it which is why like i mentioned it's good to have this in classes which only have one instance of themselves and i've now because i've been talking for so long i've forgotten what we called this so we've got the game mode event so then all we want to do is get the name of that custom event so we'll just type game mode event and you'll see here again top left hand corner game mode event has been printed out which is the print string we had inside of our game mode class so that's how you would access it from specific classes as well which i think is the slightly tidier way that if you want to do this uh, like i mentioned creating something like a, a class which is specifically made just to handle events pass things around just for debugging it really really speeds things up uh, and one thing that came to mind is that i mentioned at the beginning of the, the video that you tend not to see this in shipped games because generally when you are releasing a game you turn on the shipping build and that will just by default remove this unless you're going to go into the c side of things to override some of the engine structure uh, this will unfortunately be removed saying that i've seen some games uh, for instance arc survival evolved i was playing on a friend's ps4 um, and i noticed that we could get console commands up in there and i was doing things in that just to check what the frame rate how the frame rate was running and things like that and that was all running uh, normally on a ps4 so i have seen developers run this if you wanted to keep this in in the development build maybe for alpha beta testing or something but generally like i mentioned hopefully this is going to be really useful for time saving and debugging uh, but maybe not something that you want to rely on if you wanted like a cheat system or something in your game then you will need to come up with some form of custom system for that so hopefully this has proven useful i'll leave this video here for now as always though if you have found this interesting or useful then please do leave a like and share the video around don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel and as ever thanks for watching and i will see you all next time